The coronavirus has brought with it numerous issues, including corruption, death, sadness, and even loneliness. Those who've recently tested positive will be forced to spend this festive season in isolation to ensure they avoid spreading the virus to friends, family, and loved ones. The operations director from the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, Cassie Chambers, joins us now to discuss this further. Cassie, thank you very much for your time on this Christmas Day. The festive season is usually a time of high suicides due to the numbers of people who spend this time without the love and support of family and friends. Are you worried that isolation due to the pandemic will exacerbate the situation for many? Well, what we've seen at SADAG is normally we don't see a spike in the number of suicides over Christmas. We get the same number of suicide calls throughout the year. However, we know that this festive season, this Christmas, is incredibly difficult for a lot of people. We saw our call volumes double, and we anticipate getting even more calls um, over the December period from people who are really struggling, as you mentioned, isolation, they've lost their job, unemployment, financial reasons. There's so many different contributing factors that could cause someone to feel depressed, helpless, and hopeless. Our call centre has been incredibly busy the last couple of days. We have been flooded with calls, and our volunteers have been working around the clock. So it is something that we are anticipating to get more calls, and so many people struggle during this period. Many people also trying to deal with the loss of a loved one amid what can be a very lonely time if they're in isolation themselves. How do we support loved ones and friends who may be going through a very painful time all alone? I think that's also such a really good question, and especially during COVID when we're all physical distancing, um, we're told not to interact too much, especially during a time when we're all wanting to be close to family and friends. But for a lot of people, Christmas can be incredibly painful. It could be an anniversary of a loved one's death. It could be the first Christmas without someone. We know that this year particularly, there's been a lot of families around the country who have lost loved ones to COVID, to various other illnesses and accidents. So this Christmas is really hard for grieving families and individuals. Also, it's not like Christmas in the movies where everyone has big families and people are together. There's a lot of people celebrating alone. Um, and it's really difficult. I think as friends or loved ones is really now, even at the end of Christmas Day, is to check in with those that are perhaps even grieving or feeling alone or isolated, to check in with them, message them, call them, reach out. A meaningful conversation can really change someone's day and actually lift their mood, especially when they feel incredibly vulnerable and incredibly alone. So don't wait really do reach out um, and check in and, and make sure that they're okay. And if you are concerned, you too can reach out for help for them and you can contact SADAG or any other support services available and we can also reach out and help them. We are still open and our, our volunteers are there waiting to, to help people. When digital contact is all that we're having, um, as you've said that we are distancing from family members, friends, loved ones, so we're not seeing them in person, um, and, and when all the contact that we have is via a device, it could be via uh, WhatsApp, a message. It's not always necessarily via video calls. It's easy to miss those signs that someone is really struggling and in need of urgent support. What should we be looking out for? It's so easy to send a funny picture, a message or an SMS or a WhatsApp to reach out, but we don't really get a sense of how that person is doing. And normally on social media and how people interact via message can often be what they want people to perceive. But picking up the phone and having a real conversation, you can hear their voice. You can hear if they're sounding down. You can ask more questions, um, leading questions. So I do encourage people, like if you know that someone's alone and you wanna check in on them, Phone them, give them a call so you can hear their voice. If you are concerned, ask directly, say, how are you really doing? What are you struggling with today? Um, it's rated from one to 10. Finding, you know, probing questions just to really get a better sense of, of where that person is and what space they're in and offering support and say, hey, I know this is a really difficult time for you. I'm thinking of you and I want to be there for you. How are you really doing? Just that one sentence can really open up for someone to reach out, especially in a digital world where everything is online quick. It's all about pictures and the perception of what we want others to believe in. Sometimes asking more questions and, and doing some more human interaction 
can really dig deeper into the, into the real issues. Mm. A lot of us have a block uh, when it comes to issues of mental health. Some people find it very difficult to talk about issues such as depression, uh, heightened anxiety. They don't have necessarily the vocabulary to try and ask those leading questions. Where can we get information to push ourselves, to challenge ourselves, to have these honest conversations and to use the right kind of words to be supportive without being prying or, or using words that might push someone over the edge and make them feel judged rather than supported? And I think that's the first step, is to learn more. Once we know more and learn more, then we can have better conversations. We can be more understanding, and we can really understand what that other person is going through. So I think the first step is learn as much as you can about what mental health is and what it isn't. As you have mentioned, there's a huge amount of stigma that prevents people wanting to talk about it. It prevents people talking about their own mental health issues. So going to SEG's website, learning what it is, what it isn't, how to talk about it, what to say, what not to say, you can go to www.sadag.org and we have loads of information, short videos that you can watch to really understand whether it be for your own mental health, whether it be someone in your household or someone that you know of. You can go there and learn so much about mental health so that when you do have a conversation with someone, you're empowered and you know how to start that conversation. Not everyone has to be a mental health professional to, to be an expert to have that conversation. Sometimes it's just from understanding can go a huge way to really having a meaningful conversation with someone who perhaps really needs it and, and feels all alone. Well, thank you very much for having this meaningful conversation with us today. That was Cassie Chambers, the Operations Director from the South African Depression and Anxiety Group.